Moving. Let's keep moving. Yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, so there's the there's the pest they're trying to kill. Um, what is that? Uh, that is the peach twig borer. Okay. Which is a real serious pest at almonds. Um, mm -hmm. It's just there. There are other times that they're using other insecticides to control it, it when the bees are not there, which is really the way to go. Um, let me just jump forward a little bit here. Let's see. Where we did testing in in larvae. Um, and this is that, that uh, larval rearing protocol um, that is actually a, a brand new thing. This was de uh, developed in uh, Jamie Ellis's lab. Uh, it was really perfected in Jamie Ellis's lab. Other people have been working on it before, but Dan Schmail and Jamie uh, really got this to work in a, in a way that people have been able to make a lot of use out of it. We use their protocol here. And what, basically this is kind of a, a modified queen grafting mm -hmm. where you graft uh, worker larvae into these uh, little, uh, these are actually queen cell uh, from the Nicote system. Uh, and then you put them in these plastic plates. And rather than rearing queens, we're rearing workers. And so we feed those workers with, uh, with the jelly diet that we prepare. And we spike that with some insecticide or fungicide or combination. And then we have to go back and feed them every day because there are no nurse bees to do that for us. Yep. And eventually they emerge as uh, adults. Um, well, it's at the end of this. Um, and so this has been really, really a useful system. And these are the different things that we're comparing here. The uh, the, fung the insecticides, Alticor, Intrepid, and Dimelin, and the fungicides, Pristine, uh, Roverol, and Tilt. Um, and then we, uh, yeah, so this is just an, an illustration of the different compounds that we're putting in these these different grafts uh, of bees and uh, the goal is to see which which of these particular pesticides or combinations is causing the bees to die before adult emergence and uh, these are the, a summary of our findings uh, so we had a uh, this is the fungicides uh, pristine roverol and tilt again um, that's propoconazole is the tilt iprodione is the roverol and this Pascalid plus, plus py pyrocostrobin is the pristine. And the negative control is in gray here. And you can see that there was no, surprisingly, uh, a fungicide alone will not cause a bee larva to die, at least in this testing. Um, and we use we used fairly high concentrations. This is uh, probably at least an order of magnitude higher than what they're exposed to in, in the, a real life situation. Uh, but no effect of the fungicide. Um, and then we tested the, the insecticide. So here we have Intrepid, or the active ingredient is Methoxyphenazide. And then Intrepid plus these three fungicides, uh, the Tilt, Roverol, and Pristine again. And in this case, we saw a decreased survival with Intrepid plus uh, Roverol. Um, but it wasn't, I mean, it was statistically significant it was a, a substantial reduction but it wasn't um we weren't killing all of the, the developing bees um, and the other combinations appeared to have no effect on development uh, then we looked at dimelin and this is that insecticide i was talking about earlier that we should have known i mean it's known to kill larval insects and there's previous work from the 1990s showing that will kill honeybee larvae and I guess we just repeated that work again here because with Dimelin alone, you get a, a near complete, you know, reduction in survival of those those bees. Um, and then if you add in fungicide combinations, it doesn't make any difference. It's still just as toxic. Um, I see. And then finally, this last insecticide, Altacor, um, which has the active ingredient chlorantranilacrol in blue here. Uh, by itself, it actually is bee safe. Um, this is, seems to be lower, but it's not a statistically significant difference. Uh, and then we added it in combination with Tilt, Roverol, and Pristine, and bam! I mean, this this uh, this combination of propiconazole um, really increases the toxicity of this insecticide. Um, you get a, a moderate increase with Roverol, and uh, Altacor plus the Pristine does not appear to affect bee survival. Um, I should mention this is exact. This is one of those fungicides that we were mentioning earlier uh, that interacts with uh, talcum valinate. Uh huh. It's been shown to interact with some of the neonicotinoids. Um, this class of fungicides really has a track record of interacting with insecticides, um, much more so than any of the other fungicides that, that I've looked at. 
So I always include it in my test because I, I suspect I'm going to find something, uh, which is always encouraging. Um, but yeah, I, th I think if, if testing on combinations was going to be standardized, I think this group is a prime candidate for, for looking for interactions. I think there's enough evidence now that it, it probably should be just be tested for as a matter of, of any new registration. Any idea about the mechanism behind it? So we think, so this uh, these tilt and the rally and this group of fungicides, they work by inhibiting uh, the cytochrome P450s, uh, which are enzymes responsible for detoxification. Mm -hmm. uh, they inhibit those enzymes in the fungus. That's how they, uh, the, the, the fungicide kills the fungus. But it, it looks like there's also interaction between this with the, the P450 enzymes that break down insecticides in bees. And so this is why you get such a massive increase is because we think the reason bees tolerate this particular insecticide so well is because they can just break it down. You know, it's like me drinking coffee. You know, that, that caffeine could kill me if I got enough of it, but my liver is constantly busy breaking down the caffeine in the, in the, the coffee that I drink, so I don't die from it. But if I was to take some drug that stopped that breakdown of caffeine, you know, I could die from caffeine poisoning. Yeah. And we, we think that's what's happening here is that the, the bees just can't break it down anymore. And as a result, they're, they're dying from exposure that, that would have been safe if they'd been able to, to use their, their enzymes to break this, this insecticide down. Interesting, interesting. Wow. And those are safe for an, an adult bees too? Because this yeah, is... These, these are all safe all for safe adult for... bees. Um, we've done some other work on Altacor in particular, and we we actually sprayed bees with 100 times the field application rate of Altacor, and they were fine. Hmm. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to say Altacor is necessarily a bad insecticide from a bee perspective, because it appears to be you know, safe for the larvae, safe for the adults. Um, it's really only a problem when it's in this particular mixture um, that it, it begins to become toxic. Um, Maybe a personal question. Are you working with those and add some viruses in this mix? We, we have never gotten into the virus question. Um, right. I think that would be most, I mean, that, that would be very interesting with some of these, these bee safe insecticides because um, um, yeah, okay. I think we need to talk then. <laughs> or the fungicides. I mean, people, I mean, beekeepers very consistently uh, report problems related to fungicide exposure. And I'm, I'm always kind of sheepishly present my results here because, I mean, I have yet to find a real solid, any real solid evidence that the fungicides by themselves can be a problem, even though I think beekeeper experience really indicates that there is a problem there. It's yep. just that I have not, yes. I, I really would like to nail down what that is. And it, it could be an interaction with something that we haven't tested yet, such as viruses or some other biological stressor or non-biological stressor. I, I don't know, but there's, there's something there and I just haven't been able to identify what it is yet. Interesting. I always think about the because it looks random, and I always think about when for, I'm, talk, I'm talking about Florida when they ship uh, bees here from here to California with the different treatments they're having here. Everybody does their own recipe of feeding or or a small high beetle treatment or things like that. And when it, they get there in combination with whatever is there you might pop up, you know, with random events of synergistic effects or something that can create those mass uh, mortality that we face, they, they, they complain there. Well, I mean, the, the most suspicious one would be uh, fluvalinate, but really nobody uses that anymore. No, yeah, no, nobody yeah. using that anymore. So right. Amitrax, not... they're using a lot and even really high concentrations and but I'm, I'm sure that was tested. Yeah, I remember you, you tested well, Amitraz. I, I tested that back when I was at University of Nebraska, and Amitraz doesn't have a lot of no. synergistic potential. Yeah, apparently um, it's the safest one based on that study that you published before. 
I mean, it, it does have a known interaction with the pyrethroid insecticides. Uh, Amitraz mixed with pyrethroids can be more toxic. I've seen that actually in a number of insects. Uh, and we, we saw it to a limited, uh, limited amount in bees, but that would be the one interaction. But I mean, the pyrethroids, um, those are going to be a problem all by themselves. That's A lot of those can really, really hammer bees pretty hard, even in the absence of Amitraz. So. Nice, nice work. But uh, it's, it's still intriguing, yeah. Yeah, a lot of th a lot of things to process, my friend. A lot of things to process <laughs> to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's just too much. It's it's. Uh, I mean, I, th I think on the one hand, it's it's depressing, but it's also what makes the job interesting. I think. Yeah. It's it's there are real problems that are unanswered, and it's there just aren't enough people working on this. So it's really up to us to to try to crack some of these nuts and. Uh, Get the get, get something here. done. Yeah, uh, I really, I really want to come up with some better answers when the you know these beekeepers come to me with those losses and they're just it's it's heartbroken. It's sad. Well, let's keep moving then. Let's let's keep working, right? Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing. I always, I mean, we we identified some interactions. We identified some bad actors. Um, and the, the Almond Board of California, to their credit, has now recommending that no insecticide be applied during bloom, uh, regardless of its, its purported bee safety. Just don't apply insecticide during bloom. And that should solve the problems that we identified here. Um, but there's just so much else going on out there. And I mean, True. how much of the problem have I really explained here? Probably not that much. Mm, yeah. um, well, if you if you put that graph again, you just you're t you're just touching the pesticide. You know, all those other factors are need to be in consideration, and that's sometimes that's why I, sometimes I think that those uh, very hard attitude, like like in Europe they, when they ban thing, I, I'm curious to see if there is reduction, or uh, you know, if if that really helps in. Well, I, I did just want to share this one last figure because yeah, I'm yeah, so yeah. proud of it, actually. Um, and, and this is showing that the insecticide use was actually reduced in the years after we started talking about this research. Well, that's a great, that's a great thing to, to see. So, I mean, it's a 50% it's a reduction from the peak in 2014, um, which I'll take. Um, but there's still a lot of insecticide going on during bloom. I mean, that's about 10% of the acreage, probably representing Oh, what, 200,000 honeybee colonies exposed there? Mm -hmm. um, which is, is not acceptable, I don't think. Um, but it, I think it shows that if that this work does make a difference and that it, you can convince people that um, they shouldn't apply things. And this is not, there was no regulation that changed here. It was just a change in the recommendation from the California Almond Board and the, based on the results of what I just showed you. Um, so I, progress can happen surprisingly quickly. Um, when you identify something, a change that needs to be made, it, it can't change can't occur. Which is why I, I just love to put this graph up because it's 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 uh, it's what keeps me moving. You should be proud. It, it is an achievement, no doubt about it. Look, fifty percent reduction of pe of insecticide use. And I, I mean, the Almond Board probably sh should get most of the credit for this because they were the ones who really took took the work and publicized it. Um, but it, it's just to show that change can occur. Good. So we, we should have hope then, right? I, I think so. I guess I'm an optimist. Um, and that, that yeah, the, the things can get better. Um, it's just a matter of finding the where the problems are, and it's it's slow. It's frustratingly slow. Yes. Um, yeah. It's science. Science is slow, and people want answers super fast. Yeah. But there's there's just no other way to create. Um, I'm in the. I, I like to create convincing data that will make people change what they're doing. And if you don't do it in a careful and really thorough and convincing way, people aren't going to be convinced, and they're not going to. They're just going to blow you off. Um, so we can 
we could do it faster, but I think it's it's important to, to do it in a really the, the most convincing way we can, so that people yeah and follow the scientific method the way it's supposed to be exactly um, and I mean it still has problems because no study is perfect but um, yeah all right. I just want to say congratulations. I think you you're doing a fantastic job, Reed. It's very useful and it's applicable, and you have reached some very good achievements, like 50% reduction of insecticide. I think you should be proud, like you said. You take it, take it. It is I'll, it is an I'll achievement. Take, I mean, that's yeah, that's that's the my whole career. That's like the high point, right? Yeah, there. exactly. Take yeah. it. Just yeah, enjoy it. It, it, it is an achievement. Uh, anything else you you want to show us? Any? What, what? How about the future? What's what's coming? The, the future? Well, we I mean we're continuing to look at almond pesticides. We're also because I'm here in Ohio. We're very interested in this corn seed treatment dust issue that I mentioned previously. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that the neonicotinoids. I don't believe that they should be banned, but I think they are vastly overused, particularly in you know, agricultural crops like corn and soybeans. Um, if you talk to my colleagues here in entomology, they will tell you that a lot of this application is just not necessary. And it's killing bees. So why are we doing it? And my goal is to just better document that problem so that we can get that kind of really convincing data that a, a change needs to occur. Um, because it's, I mean, the, the problem beekeepers experience, it's, it's pretty obvious um, when, when you're noticing. Um, and it, it's, it just continues to be a problem for beekeepers all throughout the Midwest during, during planting. That's, that's what we're moving into now. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. That was very educational. I learned a lot. I'm going to keep thinking about that. And I'm sure a lot of people at home will appreciate that too. And well, I, we should talk more about viruses. I think I think viruses are. I mean, if, if you want to look at a culprit, man, viruses are bad news. That's true. We, uh, I, I, we are we are here in University of Florida. We are conducting now a, a, a research need assessment to to identify the needs of commercial beekeepers in the state of Florida. And I'm pretty sure from this need assessment, varroa and virus is going to be one of the top things and we, we for sure we're going to move that direction and if you want to sit down and we can discuss some designs and things that we can collaborate, I'll be happy doing that. Yeah, sounds good. Let's let's do that and maybe we can continue this as a video series maybe in the future. <laughs> <laughs> about the findings and maybe you know put other people jumping in to to criticize us you know i i, I like to hear all the kind of stories everybody involved i, I enjoy that yeah i mean it's it's the stories that really get all this stuff moving yeah it really yeah. is that's true well yeah we need to select i, I know some guys that really like well, to you, yeah you gotta <laughs> yeah, I, there, I there are some stories yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, a, a good example. I heard. I heard there is a guy that his job for a comp for a company, his job is to go to big clubs and identify what the what the beekeepers are believing in that specific time, so they can go back and create a product that fit what they're thinking. For you to understand the level of complexity of how a crook think <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable so yeah we need to fight these things too you know a lot of crooks there is a lot of different things the the the, the beekeeping market is growing people identify now bees as a something important everybody want a piece of the cake so there mm -hmm. is so many different things coming in in this equation and that might contribute for synergistic effect. We never know where those new products are made or what kind of compounds well, you know. And this is a concern of mine. It's a valid concern. I mean, it's just like with this, you know, the supplement market for yeah. For us. For yeah. us, yeah, it's not regulated. Uh, you know, if it, if it pass what they call the grass list, 
everything is valid so these people find a way to adjust the product to fit in that category so they don't need label boom they can sell whatever they want to bees and there is these guys making the stories to fit what the people what the beekeeper wants to think so they can sell that whatever that is unbelievable <laughs> welcome to the reality that's the field that's what i do now <laughs> unbelievable well i should get going here i gotta go home yes me too me too it's and again thank you thank you really very oh, much no, it's a pleasure let's, yeah thanks for yeah let's maybe let's do that again in the future when we have results with virus how, how about that all right yeah sounds good all right thank all you all right very have much. a good weekend I'll you see too. you later see you later bye bye